All right, I'm going to show I just took the power uh, section off of a original Nintendo toaster model, the front loader, um, and it came off pretty easy, so I'm going to do uh, another one and uh, record the process this time. Um, I'm just doing this because this, I've got a nice, fairly clean board here and a terrible looking uh, power unit. I'm going to change out the capacitors in there. Um, but uh, I'm going to take the awful looking one and put it on a system with a kind of screwy motherboard that I had repaired and then take the good power unit from that system and put it on the system with the good motherboard. This motherboard, somebody ripped off the uh, expansion port on it and they damaged a bunch of the traces in the process. So I had to um, fix that by bypassing them with some wire. So I'll make both of the systems work, but I'll make one really nice one and one kind of crappy one out of two kind of crappy ones. All right, so um, something you got, we've, to take this off, we've got uh, all this solder here. Um, holding it on the top, and these are pretty thick uh, sections. Um, and then these five uh, pins here are holding it as well, but the uh, actual solder pad that these are soldered to is on the other side of the board that we can't get to. Um, so the first one of these I did, I accidentally lifted part of one of those pads, and thankfully it wasn't bad enough. It uh, was able to be repaired, but um, I got a tip somewhere online, I don't remember where exactly, to instead of desoldering the top, desolder the same five connections on the bottom and then just pull it out. And on the other board that I've already done, you can see that's exactly what I did. There are five pins here that are still soldered and there's the rest of it just sticking out. And this is the five pins that we're going to desolder on the underside. And that seems to work pretty well. So I've got a uh, Heiko FR300 desoldering gun here. Uh, I've got it set to um, a little over one on the dial, which is, yeah, it, one is 660 degrees Fahrenheit, so, you know, close to 700 ish. <laughs> And that does pretty well. Obviously, not everybody has a desoldering gun. You can do it with the desoldering braid and a normal soldering iron. It's just a little more tedious, and you go through a lot of soldering braid. Um, and then on this side, I found that since this stuff is connected to ground, there's a whole lot more metal that you have to heat up, and it's you know heating up this entire shield and stuff too. So I found that I had to turn up the temperature on my... Uh, desoldering gun. Um, I think I used right around three, a little un under three. Three is eight, 840 degrees Fahrenheit. I was going for around 800. And let's go ahead and desolder some of this. It takes a couple of passes for each one because the so there's so much solder there. got as much as I'm going to get with the desoldering gun. Um, it's probably not quite enough to get this apart yet. What I've found I have to do is use my regular uh, soldering iron and some desoldering braid and uh, clean up the rest. And I'm going to do basically the same thing with that. I've got it uh, set to 700 degrees. I'm going to do these, this side that's a little bit more sensitive to heat um, at 700 with some desoldering braid. And uh, then I'll flip it over and go to the other side and do that with um, the at 800 degrees. 
to clean up some of those grounded points. Okay. Shouldn't be a whole lot left here. But I found that this helps to free up and just give it a little wiggle as I'm going. All right, now I'm going to turn up the temperature to 800. And we'll flip this over. And I'm going to go all around all four of those pins or fins, whatever you want to call them, that are connecting up through. You can kind of visually tell when you get most of it. These are leaving a tiny little bit behind. I'm trying to get sucked up into the soldering uh, braid here, desoldering braid. Get the other side of these last two. You probably can't see too much of this on camera. That's most, if not all, of it. Now, if I'm lucky, which I probably won't be, it'll just come apart now. But I've found that it tends to need a little bit of coaxing. I don't see any substantial solder left behind, so we're probably pretty close here. And I've found that just this tool here tends to uh, do a pretty good job of separating these without doing any damage to the components. Just need to get under there and there's nothing on the underside that I'm going to damage. There's no components right there. So as long as I don't crack the board, I can pry a little bit without worrying about doing any harm to the system. Okay, so I can tell these two here are completely free because it's moving pretty easily on those. This one, it's sliding on pretty good. And that back one might be a little bit of, uh, stuck still. I don't want to check the underside because, of course, it's pulling on these as well. Look like they're all free. So I think it's just this one. Let's take the desoldering braid to it a little bit more, see if there's anything else we can grab. Yeah, it's free now. All right. Uh, now it looks like one of these five might be grabbing a little bit one or more. Hard to tell which one. They, don't, they all look like they're free. Let's give it a little coaxing. There we go. And we're good. No damage down here. Everything came out okay there. And now I can peel off this uh, top shielding here and easily get at all of the capacitors and everything uh, inside. And just uh, reassemble it the way it was. That's it.